Hello, Crackle House followers. Um, I'm just gonna give the video a second to pop up on here. And I wanna make sure y'all can hear me. So let's see. All right, I can hear myself on my end. So let me know when you guys are joining in. Um, so I can know for sure. So today we are going to be creating these really cute little sunflower earrings. Um, I am going to be using some copper stamping blanks because um, it is chilly out. It is feeling like fall. So, you know, I want to bring in that copper color that reminds me of um, fall. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that blank out. And I'm just going to need two of those. And then, of course, I have my little sunflower charms. These are so darling. Um, they have beautiful detail on both sides. And these are from Tierra Cass. They're just really cute. And then I am going to be using two sides, two size beads here. So I have a 6 and an 8 millimeter. And I'm using that kind of teal color. Um, that is a personal preference. I still feel like teal is a fall color. Plus I can wear these other times of the year and the color is bright and vibrant. Um, you could easily go ahead and add a third size if you want a little bit more dangly ones. So I probably just go up a size to that 10 millimeter bead. Again, just a preference. And then of course I have these yummy little metal beads. I know I've showed these off a few times, but let me go ahead and get these all separated. Look at how fun and beautiful these are. So I'm going to be using these as some spacers. I'm going to use that copper color um, to tie in with my metal stamping piece here. But these are so gorgeous. If you have not worked with them yet, I totally recommend doing them, doing something with them. Um, they just add a really pretty element to your jewelry pieces. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to need one of these stamps, stamping blanks. And for the purpose of this video, so my hands aren't all in it, I have some stamp straight tape here. So I'm just going to peel a little piece. And I'm just going to tape down that top edge of my metal blank here. So I am using my hammer tone um, hammer here from Press Art. So this down here is going to spin and that's going to loosen your top piece. Your top piece is going to have a little like a nook and you're going to want to make sure that's facing towards the bottom of your hammer where the handle is. So we're going to slide that in. And then you go ahead and just tighten that all the way up. So it's not going to move that piece. When we're hammering, the best way to do it is to have that piece kind of tucked underneath your thumb and in between your hands. So when you are holding the hammer, you're holding this piece in place so that your piece is not coming out. And we're using that ball pin, and this is going to be what gives us that hammer tone look. So the camera might shake a little bit here, um, but we're going to go ahead and take this smooth surface and transform it. So when I'm doing this, I start from one side and go over and then kind of slowly go up so I can try to keep as even as I want. Dots. I don't know if you guys can see those dots there. Let me bring this up. See how it's giving it that hammer tone look? So I can have those as spaced out as I want or as close as I want. It's just going to depend on how much I hammer. And I don't pick it up super high. across. 
Now, something else I like to point out when I'm doing this, I don't like how smooth my edge is. So I do make sure I take that hammer. And just kind of make those edges just a little bit more rough. I don't know if you guys can see that fully. Let me go ahead and bring that up. So see how this is much more organic looking versus this edge over here. So I make sure I take that hammer and get the edge while I'm doing this. Just making the piece look a little bit more consistent. where this tape is and we'll move it because you don't get as if you go through this you're not going to get as nice an impression for that hammer tone look okay so now let's go ahead and move this piece i'm going to just tape down the other side and i'm going to hammer tone this top part Yes, Janine, this is a great way to get frustration out. You guys, if you have not done metal stamping, it is the best craft to get any of your frustrations or your stress of the day out. So this is nice and textured now. I did go ahead and do the other one so you guys didn't have to see the camera shaking this whole time. But I have two pieces that are hammer tone. And I did go ahead and do the back side of them. I just want to show you, you don't have to, so your one side's going to be pretty shiny on the back side, no texture in the front side. So if you don't want to see any smooth back side, I would suggest flipping it over and just repeating the process I just did. Super easy, it takes just a few minutes as you can see. Okay, so now I could just go ahead and attach the sunflower just like that, but I'm gonna take it up just one more notch and I'm gonna slightly dome it. So I wanna make sure this kinda goes inside. It's gonna have a little dent and then my sunflower can nicely just sit in there nice and nestled. So I have this awesome little dapping block. So this is nice and curved out. It's gonna be a great way to add a little dome to anything you're doing or a dent like a dish. And then you have this little tool that's gonna to go right in there. So you're just gonna put it right on top and then you're just gonna hammer a few times. Oh, I shook the camera on that one. So it's not quite as indented as I'd like, so I'm gonna kinda of Push it up to the side. And I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. So I don't know, oops. I don't know if you guys can see, but it slightly is curved in. I'm not doing anything crazy. Just a slight little dome. Let's see if you guys can see this on camera. See how that's just slightly? And we're gonna repeat that with the other side. Now, I could do this deeper if I want to really have it curved. Um, it's just gonna come down to a personal preference. Ooh, sorry, I keep shaking the camera. It's moving away from me. Okay. And we're just going to kind of rotate it. Okay. 
Okay. So I got a nice little curve on both of these, just slightly, nothing crazy. I didn't want it super, super indented. I just wanted a slight, um, a slight difference. And then now we're gonna connect these. So I have my jump rings here. Oh, Janine, that's a great question. I am actually not using the same in case anybody um, was wondering. This is not the same hammer. Um, this is gonna be the one that you, if you've already been doing some metal stamping, this is the Argo hammer. So this is what you would end up using on your letter stance, your design stance. Um, you could end up taking this hammer and switching it out um, cause it does come with three different little doodads to switch in stamper doodads, um, textures, but it's not going to get the umph you need behind it. So make sure you do have that Argo hammer, um, to hit on top of the dapper. That is a great question. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. You'll want to make sure you have that Argo hammer to really get that umph behind every little hammer you're doing. Okay. So I'm just going to connect these so I don't forget later on. And again, I'm just using my pliers and a jump ring. And I'm using silver. So I'm going to kind of mix it up with a little bit of silver and copper. We do have findings that are all copper. So if that bugs you, go ahead and get some of those copper brass tones instead. But since my charm is silver, I thought it was very fitting. Okay. Now, we're gonna go ahead and add the beads onto it. I'm using a 20 gauge wire here, um, and I'm just gonna snip a bit off. I'm using my flush cutter, so again, when I cut, I wanna make sure that flush in is towards the wire I'm going to keep. And it is all bent on me, so I can use two tools here to help straighten it. So there's this nylon roller, which is really great for long pieces. Or I can use my nylon pliers. So just hold it, hold one in, and pull the wire on through. That's just going to straighten your wire because we're going to make an eye pin. So you could just use an eye pin itself, but I have this handy dandy tool, the one step looper. It's my favorite. I show it off all the time. So you're going to slide your end of your wire through. So it's in between these little, I call them little claws and then this little um, peg. And then it's going to come out this backside. And I just need it to come out just a little bit. I don't need it too much. And then I'm just going to squeeze and it it cuts off and throws off this little piece that I don't need and it creates a loop so if you're doing a lot of work this is amazing to use and now I'm gonna go ahead and put my beads on I'm gonna start with my spacer bead so we're gonna do that nice little copper bead and then I'm starting with my larger beads, so that eight millimeter, and then I'm gonna put a spacer in between all these. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that smaller one, and then one more spacer bead. And just slide it all the way down to that loop. Now, you guys can see I have so much wire on here, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and slide it through the same way on this tool. We're just going to keep going. Oops. Keep on going. All the way until your beads are pushed up against the bottom. And this little claw is right up against the bead. So one thing I do want to point out is your loops. 
So you're going to have, you want to make sure whichever way this one is closing, I always like to do the one the opposite. And when you squeeze this, it's going to loop it out towards you and the closing and opening is going to be away from you. So if I can, I try to hold that end piece and then I just squeeze. And then pull that guy off and voila. My beaded piece is all done. I was just using wire and my amazing one step looper. And I'm gonna, oops, create one more because we've got two earrings. And it's just another excuse to show off this amazing tool. <laughs> and now we're gonna go ahead and string those beads again. So I'm doing that copper bead. Oops, my big bead. I gotta run away. Okay, that eight millimeter. My spacer bead. And I am again using a 20 gauge wire, you guys. Just in case any of you guys miss that. The 20 gauge wire is my favorite to use in this one step looper. Okay. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and slide this right through. through the hole, all the way down. I'm making sure my loop is going in opposite. Oops. Ah. I'm making sure my loop is going the opposite way. I'm gonna hold that in and then I'm just gonna squeeze. And now we're just gonna go ahead and attach these. So I'm just gonna attach this loop onto my earring. Again, making sure my bottom big bead is closest to my earring. And then I'm just gonna close my loop here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach my ear wire. I love the stainless steel components. Um, I have sensitive ears, so this is great for people who have sensitive ears because it's not going to bug you at all. At least it doesn't for me. And it doesn't rust as quickly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attach that top loop. And we're just going to go ahead and close it. If I can close it. Oh no, did I put my ear, ear wire on backwards? Oh no, I'm good. Make sure you attach your ear wire the right way. <laughs> I just thought I attached it the wrong way. Look at that, so simple you guys. Let's go ahead and finish that last one. So we're gonna open this loop, attach it. Again, making sure that big bead is closest to my sunflower. And then I'm going to slightly open this, attach it, oops, and then we're going to go ahead and close it on up. And you have a fun fall pair set of earrings. Look at that, you guys, so easy. It's so simple. I think they're really stunning looking. The teal plays so well off that copper. Um, and since you already have that fun mixed metal of that silver, you can go ahead and add silver. Um, if you got those sensitive earrings, go ahead and ears, go ahead and pop those stainless steel components in. That'll be a lifesaver. No rusting, there's no tarnishing with these. So it's great. Super simple. This is a great gift you can make for somebody, you guys. Also, don't forget, like Janine said, this is metal stamping is such a great way to get all your frustrations out in the day while creating something so beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I love to see what you guys are making. I always pull inspiration from all of our 
awesome customers. So again, please share, tag us. Um, our groups are a great way to also share. So if you haven't followed any of our groups, we've got a craft warehouse paper craft group, a craft warehouse beading um, group. They're all great, such good inspiration. And we always have some extra deals going on in those for you guys. All right, have a great day. Happy Friday, have a great weekend.